Okay, g'day all. Welcome to another shoot. Uh, so today I want to finish up talking about some fixed point operations. So we looked at addition and subtraction, a few other tricks with fixed point in the past, and today we'll look at uh, division and multiplication. The first thing that I noticed when I reviewed the previous video to see where we were up to was that uh, I forgot to put brackets around all of my parameters in these defines. Yeah, so you should do that if you think to. Yeah, always put uh, brackets around each of your parameters in your defines. It might save you some trouble in the future. Um, okay, so the first thing that I wanted to say about multiplication and division with fixed point is that the regular integer shifting tricks work. So if we've got a fixed number, say, um, well, I'll just call it f, and I'll say double to fixed, and we might say 7.0. Uh, if we shift f left, um, what we'll end up doing is doubling f. So something like that. Yeah, that's an integer uh, multiplication trick. And uh, that'll double f. Uh, likewise, you could do um, division like that. Yeah. Um, so shifting right divides f by 2 to the power of whatever this number is. And shifting left multiplies f by 2 to the power of whatever that number is. Let me just see out and make sure I'm telling you the truth here. <laughs> it's, and what do we want? Fixed to double. Endel. Okay, so this should give us 3.5. Let's have a look. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay, but on to the actual, um, you know, division and multiplication by things other than powers of 2, which is pretty trivial for fixed point. Um, what we want to do is uh, multiply a number first of all. So we want to multiply, I'll just make mul as a new define, uh, x by y, where x and y are two fixed point numbers. Now, the first thing that you might think of is that we're dealing with fractions here. Um, yeah, the fixed point numbers are actually fractions. And what they are, like this 7 just here, for instance, would be 7 times scale divided by scale. Yeah, so 7 times scale is the numerator. And the denominator is scale, you know, where scale is actually um, 2 to the power of 16 in this case. Um, so to multiply a fraction, all you've got to do is multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators of your two fractions, and you should have the answer. Uh, but it's not quite that simple for us, um, since we need our scale to be 2 to the power of 16. So when you multiply your numerators and your denominators, what we'll end up with is um, 2 to the power of 32 as our scale. So for our final answer, we've got to shift it um, right by 16. So what we might do is something like this, and put brackets around everything. It starts to look like a Lisp code in the end. Um, yeah, something like that. Multiply our numerators together, then shift that result right by scale. Let's have a bit of a look at what happens. So what I might do here is multiply, well, I'll make two fixed point numbers, A and B. We might multiply 7 by 3 with that little uh, define up there. Um, and I'll just set it to A. A equals mult that. Okay, so... Better change that to... Ah, look at that. It's zero. <laughs> 7 multiplied by 3 equals 0. <laughs> well, I probably don't need to say, but that kind of goes against my general belief system. So what have we done wrong here? Why is it giving us 0? Uh, let's just scroll up the top where I've written out a bunch of bits. Uh, zoom in a little bit. Okay, this is why it's giving us 0. So 7 in binary is that uh, in our fixed point. Yeah, so our fixed point is right there at position or bit number 16. Uh, 7 is that, 1, 1, 1. And the 3 in binary that we're multiplying by is that in binary. And what happens when we multiply these two numbers together, um, because we've actually shifted this 7 and this 3 for our fixed point format, uh, we end up with a couple of 1s over the side, like this, uh, but a bunch of zeros, a whole big string of zeros. And the result actually doesn't fit in a 32-bit integer. It fits in a 64-bit integer. So when we come to perform this shift down here, uh, this shift of the scale, maybe I should have put like that as well. Um, when we perform this final shift of the scale to try and um, you know normalize our fraction again and get it back to our scale of uh, 2 to the power of 16, 
Um, we actually only shift a bunch of zeros. Yeah, the lowest 32 zeros in our uh, answer. So that's no good. That's not what we want. Um, 7 times 3 does not equal 0. Um, okay, so the first way to get around this is pretty simple. We just go long, long, and long, long. Hey, presto. <laughs> yeah. Um, we use 64-bit integers. So long, long is a 64-bit integer. If we cast x to a long, long, and we cast y to a long, long, then when we come to multiply them, um, we won't lose those significant bits of our answer. Um, we can safely scale or shift right by our um, 16 bits, and uh, yeah, we should have the proper answer in our final result, the A down here. There you go. There you go. So 7 multiplied by 3 is 21, which is exactly the right answer, and that's what we want. And you wouldn't have to put, you know, this is um, not restricted to integers. We're using fixed point here, so we could multiply by other things, say, whatever that is. Uh, again, it's going to have a few precision issues. Fixed point's not quite as accurate as floating point, for instance, but it's pretty good. But what I wanted to say was that the trouble with doing it like this, um, particularly on 32-bit systems, like at the moment, this is a 32-bit application, um, the trouble with this is that it's really, really slow. Um, you've got to cast to a long, long. That's a 64-bit integer, and 32-bit systems just aren't built to deal with 64-bit integers. And this one over here, this, this, this shift right by scale, that's actually going to become a 64-bit shift right. It's going to use an instruction, SHRD, which isn't particularly fast. I mean, it's not that slow either, but um, just the combination of this casting uh, to 64 bits and this you know, shift right double instruction is going to make this whole thing really, really slow. And presumably, we're using fixed point to get some sort of speed increase. So there are other options, though. Uh, I... I also want to mention that another problem with this is um, if you're doing fixed point with SIMD, like you're really trying to get some speed out of the CPU, maybe you're using SSE or MMX, um, you don't want to cast to 64-bit integers in the middle of your SIMD code. Um, that would just that would be horrible. Okay, but there is a way around this. There's a, there's a trick. Um, we can do a trade-off between our um, precision for speed. So this is what we might do. Um, define and mull. Um, what do we got? Uh, it's about million, a million brace, a million braces for a start. One, two, three, four x. Um, eight. Multiply. One, two, y. Uh, that's. Um, okay, so just ignoring that shift <laughs> there at the end of uh, zero uh, for a moment. What you'll see we've done here is. Um, shifted our initial values by 8 to start with. Um, so we've shifted this 7 here, which will be stored in our fixed point format, so that these 1s are over here. Yeah. And likewise, we've shifted our 3 so that its 1s are there as well. Just like that. Then we can multiply, and our answer will have its 1s right up here somewhere. Fair enough. That's what we've done just here. Uh, but the cool thing is we've done it without moving to 64 bits. So a 32-bit CPU is going to be happy. And not only that, but you can do this a lot faster with SIMD than you could, you know, if you were casting to 64-bit integers. Uh, let's just have a play and see that it comes up with a little bit like the right answer. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So 21.832. I mean, it won't be exactly the right answer, but it's close. Um, okay, so what, what's happened here is that we've exchanged some of the precision and the range of our fixed point format for speed. Um, you can change these numbers here, these shifts. So increasing this number just here, um, these 8s just here, will increase the range of the output but decrease the precision of the input, <laughs> I think. Yeah, but you can play around with it. The trick is that these numbers have to add up to 16. So we could do something like this. Uh, 4, 4, and 8, for instance. Yeah, so shift our values um, 4. So our decimal point will be you know, here somewhere. And something like that. Well, it's not going to have a 9 in it. <laughs> and then shift the final result down by 8. Yeah, so that will give us... 
less range. Um, our input values won't be allowed or won't won't be able to be um, you know that high. Uh, they won't have a, as big a range as before, but we will have more precision. Um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Let's have a look. Oh well, there you go. It gives you 21 anyway. But if we move up to some other numbers, maybe we move up to something like uh, 128. So 128 by 3. This should break it, I think. Yeah, there you go. It gives you negative 128. So that's clearly wrong. Uh, but if you want to increase your range at the expense of precision, you can do what we had before, which is um, that, which I don't think will work either. Oh, yeah, 384. Yeah, there you go. 384. So 128 by... Where's my calculator? 128 by 3 is 384. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, so that's just a little trick there about multiplying without... Close all these down. Um, without going into 64 bits... Um, yeah, it might be useful for speed if you want to multiply things quickly. And it does give you some options there with um, yeah, regards to precision and uh, the range of your numbers. Okay, so that is uh, multiplication. Let's have a look at division. So division is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, for division, you can do the same trick as before. Um, I think three of them, long, long... Something like that. Uh, that should do the trick. So the, the, the real trick with division is just getting this um, cast right. Yeah, you want to cast your X to uh, 64 bits and then shift it. Yeah, so don't get that wrong. Uh, but let's have a go at dividing here. So uh, 128 divided by 3 should give you about 160 billion. Let me have a look. 128 divided by 3. She'll give you 42 and two thirds. <laughs> and yes, it does. Good stuff. Um, okay, so that's division uh, jumping into 64 bits. Uh, but like I said before, you mightn't always want to do that. Um, you might actually want to do or break up this shift here into several different operations. You know, exchange your um, speed there for some, or exchange your um, precision for some, some extra speed. So to. Fine to divide and use the um, a similar trick to before, uh, where we get the um, precision to go down. We can do something like uh, something like that. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, division just there using 32-bit uh, integers instead of jumping and casting into 64 bits. Uh, we do lose precision there, so let's just have a bit of a look and see if it works out. Uh, there you go. So you can see that it hasn't got quite so many sixes here. I think before it was, well, it's negative as well, so that's definitely wrong. <laughs> uh, let me have a look. So with 7 and 9, you get the range of 255 for the dividend. Okay, so if we change this to 7 and this to 9, um, we'll get a range of 255 for our dividend. So our dividend at the moment is 128, and if this is 8 and 8, um, the maximum dividend you can actually use is 127. So that's what was breaking it. Uh, but with 7 and 9, we should get a slightly more accurate result. There you go. Yeah, 42.66. So it's not as many 6s as before. We've lost precision here. But it's good because we're not jumping into 64-bit mode. And we've also got some options here as to our precision. Um, with the division um, algorithm, I think decreasing this number increases your range. Yeah. At the, at the cost of precision. Um, okay, well that's about all that I wanted to say on fixed point multiplication and division. Um, a lot of the time you might just be fine jumping into 64 bits. I mean, if you're using a 64-bit CPU, this cast here is free. Yeah, so it's not going to cost you if you're using a 64-bit um, CPU, or developing a 64-bit app, I should say. Uh, but that's all I wanted to say, so um, thanks for listening. See ya.